Hello and welcome back. On today's video we're going to take a quick look at car key fobs, their security and just how congested and easily disrupted they can be, whether that's intentional or not. Most modern cars made within the last 15 years or so will have some kind of RF transmitter to open the car doors, with many now also offering keyless start, whereby the car detects the key in the driver's pocket and allows the door to be unlocked and the car to be started and driven without the insertion of the key into the lock or the ignition. Now, many folks will have seen the problems associated with this technology over the years. It started with the wireless transmissions from the fobs being recorded and played back in order to mimic the original key. This could and still can be done very easily using SDR equipment that can both transmit and receive, such as the very popular HackRF device. More modern fobs use technology, extra hardware and tactics such as frequency hopping and encryption to avoid this, but there are still ways that this can be overcome. For legal reasons I can't detail them in this video, however as you will have likely seen it involves a computer and an antenna being used within 10 to 15 feet of the vehicle which spoofs the key into thinking it's talking to the car, effectively boosting the range of the key allowing the car to be started and simply driven away. This can only be achieved if the key is a keyless start type key, i.e. one that you don't need to put into the ignition to start the car. Criminal gangs are now using this tactic to prey on luxury car owners, taking their vehicles off the drive in the dead of night. There are ways to help prevent this of course, and one is using a Faraday cage effect wallet to keep the keys in. However, these days thieves are pretty determined, and if they can't take your property from you using one method, they will usually try another. Anyway, that aside, let's learn a little bit about where and what you might expect to hear if you go looking for the signals from a key fob. Here in the UK, key fobs use the LPD band of 433 MHz and can range anywhere between 433.050 to 434.790 MHz, which is rather usefully slap bang in the middle of the UK 77's ham radio band. The mind boggles, but there you go. LPD433 is used for remote control applications, baby alarms, a vast array of things sit crammed in this band of frequencies these days, with us ham radio operators being able to use 400 watts against a few milliwatts of power from a coin cell operated remote control. Well, you can see there are going to be problems. The band is broken up into channels from 1 to 69. And if you start at 433075 or 315 megs if you are in the US using your SDR or your scanner and hold down any button, you will quickly find your key fob and the data stream that it outputs. Now, if you're having issues with opening your car from time to time, first obviously check the battery, but make sure you've got a note of the frequency of all of your fobs, as you might be the victim of local interference or a directed attack. This does happen more often than you might think. You may find that your fob is spread spectrum frequency hopping, so it will be less likely to be affected. However, very strong local signals can deafen the receiver in the car, leading to even that not being operational. I live in a busy residential area and have a rooftop antenna. Here you can see on the waterfall many car fobs being used. Some of the activity are other signals, but most are car fobs. Now, I mentioned the intentional and the unintentional use of this frequency. Well, it's super easy, barely an inconvenience, to detect the frequency of a device in this frequency band and disrupt it. A friend works as a security guard in a local supermarket and she told me that a while back they had a spate of people using handheld radios to disrupt and distract car users laden with shopping bags who would then distract them further by offering to help them open the doors whilst their accomplices took goods or purses out of their bags. Here is the frequency that my Nissan Leaf uses. Even with the dummy load attached in the end of the radio, there is still enough power to disrupt the signal from my remote control, preventing me from opening the car doors. Because the LPD band sits right in the middle of the ham radio band, not just cheap, wide-banded Chinese-made radios, but proper, top-brand names from the likes of Yaesu, Icom and Kenwood will transmit and disrupt this band very easily, indeed, and don't forget with many hundreds of watts if required. 
I know many people that don't even realise how to open the car if the car remote fails, and many who don't even realise that there is actually a key hidden inside many of them, and also a starting procedure required should the FOB battery go flat, or if the signal is being jammed, whether that is intentional or not. If you have keyless entry on your car, ensure you have the latest software updates on your vehicle and make sure you keep your keys as far from the door as you can and if possible in a Faraday pouch. Now know the frequency that your fob works on, it's really easy to check as I've actually shown here. Transmit, nothing, and then if we listen into this you'll hear other, other remotes around the place, there you go. There's another one. So there are all other remotes going off. So you can see they're absolutely everywhere. With a Chinese radio, or there are even devices cheaply available online that will do it also. Make sure that your FOB battery is changed before it goes flat or weak. These days, coin cells are so inexpensive. Learn how to swap the battery so you can do so when needed. So next time when you're scrolling about on your SDR and you see these signals, you will know what they are. So why not get your FOB out and check it? Also, whilst we're on the subject, let's talk about losing your key fob. Now, I have been asked on a number of occasions over the years by mates who have lost or mislaid a car key in their house if there is any way to detect it, and the answer is yes and no. If your key fob is a keyless entry fob, then technically you can use equipment to mimic the car and identify itself, and in turn at least letting you know your key fob is near. However, this equipment isn't exactly off the shelf, is expensive and in many cases its use would not be legal if it were being used to boost the key. Now if your fob is not a keyless entry fob then put simply your only hope is your eyes and a bit of luck. I was always told to look in the last place you would look first, like in the fridge, even the freezer drawer, in the garden, particularly if you have little ones. I found all sorts of things in the washing machine over the years. Keep your keys safe. Know the frequency, so if you are having problems in a particular location, you might be able to find out who the culprit is using a cheap SDR. And in the case of losing keys, I can't stress enough just how important a key finder fobs are for your house or and your car keys. You don't have to go for anything too expensive or anything using an app. We use a very simple RF key finder. They often use the exact same battery as your key fob and I would recommend changing them at the same time as you change the key fob and regularly testing that they work. Right, I hope that you have found some of this useful. Please like and subscribe. Catch you on the next one.